Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center Sunday Worship Celebration. I'm Richard Moraz, Senior Minister, and we're so thrilled that you are joining us this uh, wonderful way. I feel really excited and very uh, positive about today's talk because it is uh, a message from a book that uh, the Tuesday night we're doing um, called The Happiness Advantage, which is about how powerful it is when we feed our brains with positivity. Now, right now, everybody in Phoenix is feeling very positive because it rained yesterday for the first time uh, in 100 days. You know that people are desperate for joy and for rain when you see 10 videos on Facebook with people excited just because it rained. So uh, that is a level of positivity that's a buzz in Phoenix, and so we're excited about that. We're going to ride that wave uh, into the talk. As usual, we have some wonderful music by Rusty and Craig, and we look forward to hearing that in a moment, but we will begin uh, with a great meditation led by Reverend Lori. I invite you to join me for a time of prayer and meditation. I invite you to close your outer eyes, to take in a deep cleansing breath and release it slowly, to begin to relax, to relax your body, relax your mind, Breathing in, breathing out. Moving your awareness into the very center of your being. That place where we are one with God. That place where peace passes understanding. In this awareness, we know that we are one with spirit and that spirit is all there is. That we are part of an unamazing journey on this planet, a journey to love each other more fully, a journey to rise up to our full potential using our gifts and our talents to not only improve our own lives, but to improve the world. We're being called into a time of greater awareness of peace knowing that when we become peaceful in our own hearts, the world becomes more peaceful. And that's what the world needs more of right now. And so I invite you to feel God's deep and abiding peace in your own hearts. Feel peace in every cell of your body. Know that in this calm, still place, you're rising up in consciousness to an awareness that God is ever present in us and as us and through us and that God is there making us more peaceful, allowing us to share our peace with each other, with our friends, with our families, with everyone we encounter in our daily lives. We are the peaceful presence within. And so God, we are so grateful for this time together. We take just a few moments as we move into the silence where we feel the peace that passes understanding. And so, Mother, Father, God, we say thank you for this awareness of peace. We say thank you for all of our blessings. Thank you for these amazing lives you've created for us. Thank you for the awareness of your unconditional love. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, and it is so. Amen. spreads across the sky a new day is coming but none of the questions have changed 
Life moves too quickly, we're never quite settled. Circumstance changes, but the fears stay the same. Love, love, love is the answer for hands that are reaching and hearts bruised with life. There's hope for the weary, the broken and weak, cause love, love, love is the answer we need. All we are are empty cups waiting for filling. We seek out acceptance and love. We're reaching for the better things, but all that we're reaching is the feeling we never can get quite enough. Love, love, love is the answer for hands that are reaching and hearts bruised with life. There's hope for the weary, the broken and weak, cause love, love, love is the answer we need. So come as you are, come to the water, come and be thirsty no more. Cause love, love, love is the answer for hands that are reaching and hearts bruised with life. There's hope for the weary, the broken and weak. Cause love, love, love is the answer. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Craig. That was wonderful as usual. Thanks. All right. So this avid hunter was uh, in the market for a bird dog. And he was searching and searching. And he came across and bought a bird dog that actually walked on water. He actually couldn't believe it. And he knew once his friends here, you know, they, they won't believe what an amazing thing it is. And he was particularly wanting uh, to looking forward to showing it to his next door neighbor who was the most pessimistic, negative person who could never find anything good to say. So the next day he invited this negative neighbor to go hunting with him. And he didn't say a word about it, but they both shot at birds and they dropped and the dog walked on the water, got the birds, came back. And the negative neighbor kind of furrowed his brow, but he didn't say a word. And so the guy didn't say a word either, and this kept going every, uh, all afternoon, and they would shoot, and he'd bring back um, the, uh, the birds by walking on water. And he didn't say a thing except for where his brow a little bit. So on the ride home, the guy couldn't help himself, and he said, hey, did you notice anything kind of interesting about uh, the, my new dog? And the negative neighbor said, yeah, he can't swim, can he? So our question for today is, are you a positive person? Are you always positive? Are you mostly positive? Are you sometimes positive? Or are you not so positive? If 10 was the perfect picture of positivity, would you be a 10? Would you be a 8? Would you be a 5? Would you be higher in your relationship in terms of positivity? And would you be lower in finances or your health? What is your level of positivity? Well, I'll guarantee you, whatever our level of positivity is, whatever level we think, I bet every one of us knows we could probably be a little bit more positive in our own lives. You know, in 1998, um, Dr. Martin Sliegman, uh, who was the president of the American Psychological Association, wanted to introduce a new domain of psychology, and it was called positive psychology. Because one thing he noticed was, even though we wanted, they wanted to help people, they tend to study mental illness and maladaptive or dysfunctional behavior. They focused on the negative while trying to help people. And so he thought, why not study the positive, healthy, well-being attitudes and behaviors if we wanted people um, to be healthier and happier? 
So positive psychology was born. And positive psychology is a scientific study of the strengths that enable individuals or community to thrive. It is based on the idea that people have an innate desire for a meaningful and fulfilling life, and they are willing to work on themselves to create a greater experience of love, a greater ha happiness in their work, and in all areas of their lives. And in all the research that has been done, studies show that having a positive brain is the fuel that actually leads to greater success and happiness in our work in all areas of life. Now, some people tend to believe that you're as happy, you're born either happy or you're born positive uh, or you're born outgoing, you're born in these certain ways. And while there is some truth to some aspects of that, the fact is, whatever level we are, we have the ability to actually increase it, make it better. Because studies show that the brain is malleable. The brain has something called neuroplasticity, that we can rewire and train our brains to be more positive, you know, to be more optimistic, to be happier and more joyful. But it takes practice. We have to practice positivity to develop new wiring and new patterns uh, that will help us see and experience life in a more happy and fulfilling way. For the last few weeks, we've been having some Tuesday Zoom classes, and it's uh, based on a book called The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acker. And in it, it has some practices of positivity. And so today's talk is really about sharing some practical um, practices of positivity to help our lives and to increase our positivity in our brains that'll help us um, experience life more fully and more joyously. And it also helps us increase and maximize our potential and, and brings out the very best in ourselves. So here are some things we're gonna look at today. The first one is learning how to prime the brain. You know, they say like our brain is like a computer, garbage in, garbage out, that you only get out of it what you put into it. And sometimes our brains are primed and conditioned towards negativity, and we need to learn how to improve it and prime it to more positivity. Like, have you ever known someone that no matter what the situation is, they can find the negative or they can find something to complain about or see something that they don't like in the situation. I mean, some people are so negative, if they win the lottery, the first thing they think is, oh my God, how much taxes I gotta pay. Sometimes we could look at a report card and see only the C's and miss out on the A's. You know, we can sometimes look at a spouse or a children and only see the things they do wrong, not the things they do right. Sometimes we can go out to a nice restaurant and we miss noticing how good the steak was because the potatoes were underdone. It is amazing how sometimes we focus and only see the negative uh, things in life. And they say that there are certain jobs, um, and they, in the book they use tax collector and lawyer because they look for things that don't work. They look for flaws in arguments, they look for um, rules that were broken, and they said unless you compartmentalized, sometimes we can get trained to always focus and see negative in the world, whether it relates to our job uh, or not. And so having a negative pattern in our brain has a see and notice and experience and attract even more negativity in our lives. So the question is, how positive are you? You know, are you a, the glass is half full kind of person or a glass is half empty? So here are two practices we can do to prime our minds to greater levels of positivity. The first one I'll introduce with a study. They did a study with four-year-olds in putting together building blocks, and there were uh, two groups. And the one group of kids were told, think of something that makes you feel good, like ice cream uh, or a puppy or a hug from your mom. And then they did the activity. And in every single case, the ones that got primed with a little positivity of feeling good outperformed doing this task well compared to the ones that didn't. And the amazing thing they learned was even a small bit of positivity introduced before an activity actually helps you do that activity uh, with greater success. And what happens when we prime our brain? Two things happen. One, it reduces the amount of stress. Because when we get into that fight or flight uh, kind of response, the adrenaline goes 
high, our hearts beat, and our minds focus. You know, they get narrow. But when we're relaxed, the second effect is it creates a broadening. It opens the mind, it increases the awareness, helps us see possibilities, helps us see solutions uh, in greater ways. That we really can make our brains more positive and we actually see life in a very different way and react to it um, in, in, in different ways. And again, it doesn't have to be big, it just has to be consistent, particularly before we do a particular activity. It could be eating candy. Um, it could be thinking of a vacation you're gonna go on. It could be getting excited about rain. It could be any of these things, reading a good book. But infusing some positive energy before we do a, something really makes a difference. Like before you're doing a talk, or before you have to, make a, have to have a tough conversation, or make a difficult decision, particularly with difficult things, introducing some positivity just before of it has an impact into what we do next. Uh, the second uh, uh, priming for positivity is, and I'll introduce it again with um, a study, is they did a study with folks over a course of a week and asked them that before they go to sleep, they think of three good things that happened to them. And it could be any uh, three uh, good things, that they ate a nice meal or a long lost friend called and they reconnected. It could be anything. And what they noticed was that there were lingering effects of positivity after only doing one week of three good things every night, that even three and four and five months later, uh, people felt happier, they felt less stress, they felt more uh, energy. And the thing about that is that when you think of three good things just before you go to bed, what it does is it forces your brain to search and think and scan and look for the positivity. And as you do it more and more, what happens is you find yourself finding way more than three because you set your brain to scan and look for the positive and you end up finding a lot more than three. Not only does it tend to focus on the positive, but it actually pushes away the frustrations and disappointments in your day and actually raises that whole level of our experience of what's going on uh, in our lives. Uh, you know, um, William James, who was the father of American psychology, said this, my experience is what I agree to attend to. My experience is what I agree to attend to. There are all kinds of things in the world, but our experience comes down to what we are agreeing to put our minds toward. And the more we put it to positivity, the better our brain fuels us to move towards optimism, to happiness, uh, to gratitude and to seeing greater possibilities for all areas of our lives. So are you a half empty or half full? And it doesn't really matter where we are because we can get even fuller, but we have to be willing to practice positivity. And the first way is by priming the brain for positivity. The second one is to adjust your mindset. Sean Acker uses an interesting thing. He says, uh, a fulcrum and a lever. And an example would be a uh, seesaw. The middle is the fulcrum and the lever uh, are, is the long plank that they sit on. And it can balance, but if you put a heavier uh, person and there's a lighter person, it will, the heavier person you know, will weigh down. But they said, if you were to just move the fulcrum closer to the heavier person, it'll create more leverage and the, the heavier person will suddenly become lighter. And so moving the fulcrum creates something that's heavy and difficult, actually makes it lighter. And you know what that fulcrum in life is? That we could move to make things that seem heavy lighter? It is our mindset. That when you move and change your mindset, anything that feels heavy actually becomes lighter and things get easier. Let me give you another study. They did a thing with 75-year-olds and they had them go on a retreat for a week, just 75-year-old males. And the instructions were this. So this was 1979. So they said, it's 1959. It's 20 years earlier. And you are no longer 75, you are 55. And all the clothes they brought for, was for when they were 55. All of the articles, the pictures, the letters, anything in their life had to be when they were 55 back in 1959. 
All the conversation had to be in present like it was 1959. In present, like they were 55 years old. So if they wanted to talk about current events, it was about President Eisenhower. If they want to read a magazine, Life magazine or Saturday Evening Post, it was a 1959 article. They had to think, be, act, and behave like that for a full week. And so after moving their mindset this way to 20 years younger, do you know that every single uh, category of aging, from their strength uh, to their memory uh, to their perception, cognition, their eye, their quality of eyesight, uh, and even their physical appearance all improved significantly. They were tested before, tested after, and everything improved in their lives by just believing, acting, thinking, looking like they were 20 years younger. And so the fulcrum was their mindset of moving it to thinking they were 20 years younger and it made you know, the heaviness of aging actually lighter and more balanced and easy. Isn't that amazing? Every one of us has the power to adjust our mindset and our experience suddenly becomes different. Wayne Dyer used to ask this question, how old you would you be if you didn't know what age you were? How energetic do you wanna be? How passionate do you wanna be? How enthusiastic do you wanna be? How kind do you want to be? Any area of our lives, we have the power to adjust the fulcrum, and it'll give us leverage to make things uh, easier for us. Another cool study they did was with a cleaning staff at seven different hotels, and they had the control group and the test group. And with the test group, they told them this one thing. Do you know that the work you're doing in cleaning burns X amount of calories a day, improves your cardiovascular fitness, and helps you stay healthy? Well, one of the groups, and they just did the exact same work, cleaned the exact same around my rooms, but this one group was told this information, which is actually true, and they focused on it while they did their work. Do you know a week later that some of them had lost weight, that they were feeling healthier, they were feeling more active and engaged in their work, that it isn't the, always the activity but it's the thought about the activity that actually makes a difference. The moving the fulcrum on the same work, just moving the mindset, created some incredible differences. I mean, it is powerful, you know, the ability we have to shift the way we see life and interact, and it really produced some great results. Another one is they did uh, a study on people who really don't like meetings. Think meetings are boring, they're dull, they're a waste of time, nothing really happens, they drain energy. And then they ask these people, okay, so let's think about it this way. Meetings are opportunities for us to develop new skill and to learn new things. So we'll go into meetings thinking uh, that I'm gonna learn three new things uh, that it's gonna help my life. And so they would go to meetings and they would look for something to learn. And so they would learn about presentation skills about the person who spoke, or they'd learn about leadership and how the person who ran the meeting handled it, or particularly how they handled uh, difficult questions. That literally shifting the fulcrum or the mindset of a mundane activity they couldn't stand suddenly became something that was not only bearable, but actually beneficial and more positive. So think of something you don't like to do eating salad, working out, doing the laundry, visiting your in-laws. You can pick your own. But what way could you move your mindset for something you don't enjoy you know, to create a greater leverage to make that situation easier and more positive in your life? You know the difference between someone who's lucky and unlucky? The person who's lucky thinks they're lucky, and the person who's unlucky thinks they're unlucky. We don't realize the power we have in our minds. We have the ability to consciously move the fulcrum and move our mindset and make whatever felt heavy much lighter and much easier uh, in our lives. So in what area of your life can you move your mindset and change that fulcrum to take advantage and make whatever it is that you're doing a lot more enjoyable, easier, and way more productive and enjoyable. So last thing I wanna talk about is about uh, affirming 
uh, yourself. You know, one of the greatest things that affects our performance and fulfillment is us believing in ourselves. You know, believing uh, in our abilities. They did a study with 122 accounting people who entered uh, on the entry level in their companies, and they did a test to ask them, you know, how much do you believe in your knowledge, believe in your skill? And everyone that scored high on believing in themselves, believing they could make a difference, 10 months later, scored the highest uh, by their supervisors. Research shows that when you focus on what you're good at, when you focus on your strengths, it gives you a boost to hang in there in, in whatever challenging situation you might be going through. That when we focus on what we're not good at and what's horrible and what isn't working, it reduces our ability to do our best and to be successful. Let's say public speaking is not your great strength. And if you are going into a presentation, it will actually help you by focusing on what you're good at. So thinking, I am really prepared. I really did a lot of research on this, and I'm, I, and I'm really hoping that this goes well. Instead of saying, hey, I'm not good at this, you know, that even if it's something you're not strong at, still focus on what you are good at in your life, and it will make a difference. Believing in ourselves makes a difference. You know, Scripture says, you are the light of the world. You are the temple of the living God. You know, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That believing in our talent, believing in our goodness, you know, believing in our skills and our ability and our beauty actually makes a difference in how we show up particularly, but how we perform and what we uh, experience. So, what are your f five greatest talents? What are you really good at? I mean, are you really organized? I mean, are you very mechanical? You're good at fixing things? Are you good with money? You know, you know are you good at math? Are you good at parallel parking? You know, are you good at uh, making blueberry pancakes? It doesn't matter. But what it is, is for you to know it, you to own it, to remind yourself and affirm yourself of being good at those things, and particularly when you've got to do something difficult, when you're working through. In general, it helps but it helps even more when you are doing tasks or trying to achieve something. And the second aspect of that is not just believing in yourself, but believing that you can improve your abilities. That believing that you can improve your ability even takes that energy of success up to a higher level because it means that you're willing to learn, that you're willing to grow, you're willing to try again, that even if you fail, even if things don't go well, even if you're not good at it now, believing you can improve, believing you can hang in there and over time you will get better is a powerful mindset that creates positivity in the brain and starts seeing areas for success and growth uh, and improvement. It's the difference between what they call a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. One that believes, well, this is as good as I get and I tried, it didn't work, forget about it, to one that says, hey, I didn't do well the first time, but I'm coming back stronger. This is gonna make me stronger, this will make me wiser, this will make me better, and over time, I'm, I will become really great at this. So that belief that we can improve and get better and grow is a very powerful mindset that adds a lot of positivity that creates success and improvement in our lives. You know, everybody knows I love the affirmation each and every day in each and every way, my life is getting better and better and better. And my mom gave me a book that is uh, or, uh, originated with Dr. Emile Couet, who was a, um, a French pharmacist, and he would give people some medicine. He said, take this medicine and then say, every day and every way my life is getting better. That was the original. I just added the each and every day and better and better just from, to get me jazzed. But I remember when the first time I um, read that, things weren't going that well in my life, but when I said that, you know what? I felt hope. I felt a sense of optimism and joy and possibilities and knowing that things really could get better. Every time I say that, I smile because it doesn't mean that life is perfect, but it means for wherever I am at that moment, wherever I am at that stage of my life, that there's still possibilities. There's still hope. There's still joy. 
there's still an energy and a life power in me that wants to advance and grow and attract even greater things. Our brains are so much more powerful than we realize. We really have an incredible creative computer, but we can only get out of it what we put into it. And so let's make a commitment to start practicing positivity. Let's condition and train our minds to get the very best out of itself. And it's so much simpler and so much easier than we realize. We just need to be consistent. Consistent in priming the brain by thinking of three good things that happen to us um, before we go to sleep. And before we do something challenging, you know, just think of something that makes us feel pleasant, that makes us feel good. The second is to adjust the mindset. Move that fulcrum. If you don't like something, change how you look at it and it will give you the leverage and make things a lot easier and you'll be more successful. And finally, affirm yourself. Believe in you and believe that you can improve. Believe that your life will get better and better and better because it really will. You know, the, my father used to say, the world is your oyster. You can create any and everything that you want, but you have to be willing to practice positivity. God bless you all. And now it's that time in our service to give of our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. Thank you so much for sending in your checks, for contributing online, for continuing to support this ministry when we can't be present except by virtuality. So thank you for your offering. If you'll imagine holding your offering in your hands and say, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Will you affirm that with me? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so we say thank you, Mother, Father, God, for these gifts, these tithes, and these offerings. They are given in love, they are received in love, and that they move through this ministry with the energy of divine love out into the world as good. And each giver is blessed, heaped up, pressed down, and overflowing, for that is the law, and so it is. Thank you, God, amen. So thank you for being with us. We really appreciate all of your support. We hope you're having a great week, staying at home, but still doing what you need to do. God, we're so grateful that we can reach people virtually. It's such an amazing thing. And now will you affirm the prayer for protection with me? The light of God surrounds us. The love in God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a fabulous week.